Good afternoon, everybody on the One Team Active programme and welcome to our session on healthier habits. And this is a half hour lunch and learn session on how to overcome barriers to achieve goals. So as you come to the final week of your One Team Active programme, I'd like to invite you to spend 30 minutes just identifying how you continue the new practices, routines, activities and the healthy changes that you may have started as a result of signing up to this programme. Just going to unshare there a second. OK, so when the programme ends, what are your individual health goals and what would achieving that goal mean to you? So we're going to really focus and discuss the challenges that you might face and work out a strategy to make it feel more achievable to maintain these health goals that you may have started. So let this be the start of some long term lifestyle changes to help you feel more energised and well not only to do your demanding jobs, but to enjoy life as well. Making changes to a long established routine or habit can be a major challenge. We get very comfortable in our ways and the thought of all that effort to learn and carry out new practices can feel overwhelming and a massive effort. Even if we do know what's good for us, it's still really hard to change practices that you might have been enjoying for decades. We know that eating vegetables is good for us, that we should exercise regularly, not smoke, not drink too much. And we can have the very best of intentions to make changes. But eating behaviours, for example, are deeply entrenched habits, sometimes with very powerful ties that can be hard to cut. They can be steeped in tradition and ritual um, and sociable um, activities and events. And so even though we know that cutting down or cutting things out may be good for us, we can be up against a lot of environmental and social and um, possibly religious um, connotations as well, all to do with, with, with celebrating food. Let me share my screen with you again. OK, so here is my optimal you flower for the last time. This is a reminder as to how each of the different health areas of your life overlap. So the aim of this session is to ask you what area of your health you may be looking to improve. Where is your limited time best well spent? Thinking back, perhaps, to why you signed up to the programme. What did you want to achieve and why? If you wanted some direction in getting fitter, what does getting fitter actually look like to you? Does it mean being stronger, faster, slimmer, able to run 5K or to fit into a pair of jeans that have got too tight? It will be different, a different motivation for everybody. And what was or is your driver for wanting to be fitter? What is your personal motivation? If you're keen to eat more healthily and be more, more active, is it because of a health scare? So adopting some healthier practices has become a personal necessity. Or are you unhappy with feeling heavier and want to lose some pounds to feel lighter and more energetic? Do you have a specific event in mind where you want to look or feel or wear something particular? Being able to identify a specific health goal, knowing why you're working towards that and what it will mean to you and your life can help to focus your efforts. So once you've got the what and the why and you're still working towards it, how are you going to carry on going about achieving that, especially without the support and perhaps accountability of the One Team Active programme and coaches. So what needs to change for you to achieve those goals? What needs to be put in place to make succeeding as easy as possible? And once you've looked at the barriers that might stand between you and a successful outcome, does it still feel achievable? Have you tried to make certain changes in the past to achieve that goal? And what happened? If it didn't quite work out, why was that? So thinking back to your motivation, if your drive is a rather, rather vague, I could probably do with losing a few pounds, but it never gets beyond that little mental grumble. Is that actually a realistic priority? How committed are you to achieving that goal that you have in mind? If you are still a little unsure about whether the effort is worth it in these new healthy habits, Here's an example of some of the considerations that might crop up as you weigh up whether a particular change to your habit, to your diet, to your routine is going to be worth it for you. So this is grandly called a decisional balance sheet. It can be a helpful exercise to consider where you are. So first 
today we look at the pros and cons of, of doing nothing, of staying the same. And that can, so we look at the pros of staying the same. So staying the same means that you stay comfortable with in your current routine. It's familiar. You know what's happening day to day. You don't need to do anything different. So you just carry on. You don't need to find any extra mental energy or adopt any new skills. Um, you don't need to deprive yourself of anything. You're just going to carry on. So those are the pros. But the cons might be that continued lack of energy, that frustration that that weight isn't shifting around your middle and those those jeans continue to feel tight. It might be that you regularly have a low mood. You feel that you could be doing more. You're not able to keep up with the kids running around anymore. And that can be frustrating. And maybe you get out of breath more easily than you used to. And then we look at the pros and cons of making some healthy changes. And what are the pros and cons going to be? What's the cost going to be to you? So the pros could be that you are going to feel more energised. You may learn some new skills and that could be really motivating. You could feel really pleased with yourself at achieving small steps towards that goal. That can be great for your confidence. And maybe some health symptoms that you've experienced for a long time might resolve, might reduce. You might actually... Um, have a decrease in levels of discomfort and pain. But the cons to making changes are that it could well be some extra effort. It's going to demand some extra time. So you're going to have to do some real juggling with your weekly schedule. There may be that fear of failure. What if you try something, but it just doesn't work out? You don't achieve that goal. You might be worried about being judged if you, uh, you know, in the workplace, if you suddenly come in and say, no, thank you. I, I'm not having those food treats today. I'm going to have this healthy, colourful salad. Um, you know, you might worry about the, the outcome of that, of being judged for that. And you might really miss the comfort of those old habits of sitting on a sofa with a lovely big tub of popcorn or whatever it is on a Friday night um, with a couple of glasses of wine. And that, you know, you might feel that that is a big sacrifice. Also, with weighing up whether it's going to be the, um, whether the changes are worth it, is looking at the cost to you, and this can help in working out those pros and cons of changing or not changing. So, in terms of cost, what are the benefits going to be? What are the costs going to be on your time? How much effort are you going to have to put in to achieve your goal? And what level of discomfort can you expect? So maybe you're going to be working some new muscle groups if you've been looking at the videos that have been posted in the Facebook group of, those, of that 10 minute abs, that 10 minute on the legs, 10 minutes on the arms. Are you ready for that level of discomfort initially um, that, that might come with a new fitness regime? And so what support and what resilience do you have to deal with these challenges and these costs? For example, how might you cope with any short term cravings and hunger? Are you going to be prepared for that period of transition, of missing some of your creature comforts? How, where, where is your own personal mindset? How is it geared up for these challenges? And what support network, support network do you have in place to help you succeed? So this is a, a behaviour change model that I use regularly in my private practice, and it's called the COMBI model. I really like this. It's very simple. We're going to break it down and give you the opportunity to have a go at completing it. So it's a problem solving approach to our individual challenges. And we're looking at finding some solutions to make um, any kind of new habit or new behaviour um, as easy as possible. So the new behaviour at the top of the diagram there is the what. What is your health goal? What do you want to change? What is that new practice or behaviour? And then capability. Motivation and opportunity are the how. How are you going to successfully adopt that new behaviour? So successful behaviour change does rely to an extent on motivation. But it also requires a lot more than that because motivation can very quickly wane off once we've had that initial excitement about something new and go, yes, I'm definitely going to run a marathon next year. And then the reality kind of kicks in and life carries on and the motivation dwindles. So we need more than that to achieve our target behaviour, our target goal. We have the capability, which is the know-how to do something. Have we got the knowledge, the skills and the ability to achieve that behaviour? 
And if we haven't got that, what is it going to cost and how are we going to in, um, achieve that capability? How are we going to acquire those new skills or that knowledge um, to meet that behaviour? And then the opportunity is, um, is where we can find barriers. The more barriers that we have in these categories, the less likely we're going to stay motivated to continue with that behaviour. So the motivation is the psychological energy that drives us towards the goal. And if that energy, if that motivation is internal, it comes from inside you, it's related to your values, your ethics, your passions, then the more likely you are to be driven and committed to achieve your health goal, to changing a certain aspect of your behaviour. But if your motivation is external, it comes from outside influence. So, for example, you've signed up to something because of the influence of friends or family or colleagues, even your GP. If you're not wholly convinced, then this form of motivation is less likely to succeed. If you're not, if you're not fully behind it, you don't fully believe in it. And so then what happens when that psychological energy, that motivation that drives you starts to wane? So we need to look at um, building in the capability um, in terms of healthy eating, for example. Do you need to increase your knowledge and understanding about different food groups and how balancing those on a plate of food can really impact your energy and your immune system and your, um, your musculoskeletal health? For example, your hormones. Um, do you have the right cooking skills and the equipment to create some delicious, healthy meals? Do you need to boost your confidence in the kitchen? If so, how and when can you make that happen? And then the opportunity refers to things like your environment, where you live, the, your, the time you've got, which is absolutely key. Um, as many of us have great intentions, but just, you know, if we had the time, if we had endless amounts of time, yes, we'd go to the gym every morning or yes, we'd go for a jog or a swim or whatever it is and spend ages making lovely, healthy dishes of food. But time is so limited um, that this can be a really tricky one to combat. And then resources will be things like the choice of shops that are near your home or near your place of work, your food options that they offer. And also then your social opportunities, your social support, offering encouragement as well as some accountability to help keep you focused on achieving your goal. So if we can identify potential obstacles, then we can look at ways to overcome these to make your achieving your health goal as easy as possible. So you may have the capability to make delicious, nutritious meals. You may have a whole stack of cookery books with delicious, healthy recipes, but you just don't have the time. So what can we do about that to make sure you don't spend the next however many years grabbing an ultra processed ready meal alternative, hoping that that's going to nourish you sufficiently, both short and long term. Where are those opportunities within your week to make a small, realistic change to achieve that healthy behaviour? And the how needs to start off small and easy. So you don't need to take out a brand new gym membership and say you're going to go there every day. You just need a tiny step in the right direction and achieving that tiny step then builds the confidence to just then go and what's the next tiny step and what's the next tiny step to build on it gradually and embed it slowly as a new habit. And then we are much more likely to overcome the barriers identified if the cost to us starts off feeling quite small. The more likely we are to continue repeating that tiny change and then we see the success of that small step as a small win. So this is that combi mo model um, put into a template that you could use to plot out your target behaviour. So the top, the target behaviour is your goal. What is your goal and why is it your goal? So that's where you write your something specific. So rather than just I need to I could do with losing a couple of pounds. Let's think about how we can make that more specific. So is there an event that you um, would like to have lost that couple of pounds by? Is there a yeah something later on in the summer? Um, is there a sporting um, event that you like would like to participate in? Something specific that um, feels achievable. And then how are you going to achieve it? What is standing in your way? What are your capabilities, the skills and know-how? That's your capabilities. What have you already got? And then what do you need to help you achieve the, your new goal? And then we look at the opportunities. 
is what opportunities do you already have to help support you there and what are the barriers so that may be time it may be location it may be the social aspect it may be that you don't have feel that you have the social support um that will encourage you towards that target behavior so you know where else can you get that support from could it be just an online group um, could it be a, an ongoing personal trainer could it be a friend whether they're local or whether they're distance it's somebody that then can give you some support encouragement and accountability so let's think of some examples to make um, some good food choices for example if we're thinking of the nutrition side of health goals we could we, um, it could be to do with snacking it could be to do with meal planning it could be to do with shopping habits being about more careful about how often we go into the supermarket where we're going to be tempted with lots of um, offers and treats and snacks and so on and the smell from the fresh bakery and about what foods go into our trolley it could be to do with batch cooking it could be just to do with adding a vegetable to every every main meal that you have um, so that could be some examples And while we're thinking about that, so maybe you would like to just um, download that template and have a really th good think about it. And whilst you're thinking about that, here are some key tips for making successful behaviour change. And these are tried and tested. So that motivation towards your goal needs to come from within. You need to feel really strongly about it yourself, not just signing up to it because the rest of your team happen to be doing it. And you think, OK, I best, I best go along with that. Um, you know, something that you really sincerely believe in and, and feel quite driven by. And it must be easy. So making steps as small as possible that feels achievable. So if, you, if you're committing to going out on your bike every Sunday afternoon for a 10K cycle, but your bike is actually right at the back of the shed and the tyres are probably a bit flat. And you're not quite sure where the pump is. How realistic is that as a goal that that's going to happen? Whereas, you know, if tomorrow night you're going to go out and move the bike to the front of the shed and then the day after you're going to go and buy a new pump on the way home from work and then on Saturday you're going to pump the tyres up so that by Sunday it's ready and you've got the right footwear and gear and everything else you need it's just making that you know it, it just needs to be really really at hand and as simple as possible for it to happen and then being supported is really important particularly if it's something that you want to look at achieving long term um, you know where's your where's your support network and the accountability and that's why it can it can help with having a personal trainer or a mentor of some description that you need to report back to on a regular basis whether it's weekly or monthly or however often um, it just gives you that extra um, that extra motivation to think oh I've got to do that because I've got to tell so and so in a week's time that I've done it um, and that can be really powerful so let's just go back to that template. If um, anyone wants to do a screenshot or um, or make some notes about that, um, and it would be lovely to hear if anybody has a goal that they're aiming towards once the program is finishing, um, and if they've got in mind any um, new skills they need to achieve for that or have done over the program, um, and also what achievements people have made over the program as well. Perhaps already considering this from back at the beginning as to why you signed up for the programme in the first place. And I know that there's the feedback form as well to complete um, about how effective you found it. So it'd be fantastic to hear how you have found the nutrition input on this programme, whether it's been helpful, um, but also hearing about your goals for the future would be really wonderful to hear. OK, so let me just unshare for a moment. Um, Catherine, is there any questions at all about um, about that? Um, being as you have joined us today or um, any comments that you'd like to make at all? No, I'd just like to say, though, that all of your um, webinars have been so useful um, and I'm I'm making small changes to my lifestyle just because of what you said. So thank you for that. Um, I just wanted about the download. Are we going to offer that somewhere on Facebook or on the website? Would that be useful? Yeah, yeah. So I can I can upload this onto the Facebook group later and then I can send you um, the download recording that can you, that you can share. Um, amongst the other Facebook groups and um, the Team Police YouTube page, if that's if um, if that would be helpful as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Anna. OK, well, I hope, yeah, I hope that um, people have found it helpful. And if you do, once the group um, programme 
has finished, you can still go back and have a look at all these webinars um, on the Team Active um, and the Team Police um, YouTube channels and on it um, via their website. So if you need any little recaps or if you want any prompts as to where your um, healthy changes or goals might come from, then go and have a look at that too um, and see where you might want to focus your energies and attentions um, in the weeks to come. So one final mention, I'm just going to give a little plug to an event that's happening next week. It is the five day sugar solution challenge, which we're running with Oscar Kilo. So if you look at oscarkilo.org, there is um, under the Nutrition for Wellbeing pages, there is a now a dedicated sugar solution challenge page. We're starting next Monday and we're looking to um, do a little health and energy questionnaire on day one which you can actually access now already. You can sort of score your health and energy, how you feel right now. And then each day there's going to be a slightly different focus on reducing or even eliminating sugar from our diets for a week to have a little recalibrate, a little reset um, and try to see if we can boost those scores. Actually, we're looking to reduce the scores because the higher the score, the worse your health and energy is right now. So we were trying to reduce the scores to below 16 um by reducing and eliminating sugar and i'm going to give a lot of information each day in a little little video each day about um the health impacts of having a, a diet that is high in sugar and um, the impact on energy and cravings and um, energy slumps and so on and giving some health alternatives and some recipe ideas some little demos there'll be quite a lot on the oscar kilo instagram page um so hopefully that might be a helpful next step for people once this program is finished so um, I hope that might be really helpful and something for you to uh, to participate in as well. OK, so um, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks so much for joining, Catherine. And I really hope this has been a helpful session and uh, good luck, everyone. Thank you.